Is it heartbreaking to you that the uh, so-called Donahar Death Squad split or the team as it was originally called split? You know, we live a short life on this earth and you put so much of your love and work into this team and everybody put in the work. Does it break your heart? It was a sad time, yeah, it was. Um, it was, uh, you know, I'm not a particularly emotional person, um, but it was a, it was an emotional time for everyone. It was, uh, it had an element of tragedy insofar as not only was it a team breakup, it was also a family breakup, which is much more serious. Um, I do believe that in time, uh, even the most intense family breakups can be reconciled. And I also believe that once dialogue begins, people will remember just how easy it was for us to get along and how tight we were for many, many years. Um, it's so easy to let a minute of anger destroy 10 years of, of, uh, of friendship. So, but there's also the weight of those 10 years. Like um, when I ran into the old squad members at ADCC, we got along like a house on fire. It's like we never had a problem. Um, so a house on fire is a good thing. Yes, yes. Sorry, that's a New Zealand expression, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, they, they definitely could have gone the other way, right? Um, so uh, Only a New Zealander would say that is a good thing, yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's this... I, I still believe, you know, in, in time things will be fine. But um, there was an element where, you know, y youngsters need to grow. And um, uh, sometimes, it's, think, think about it this way, from the athlete's perspective. There's a, definitely a generational problem. I'm much older than my students, okay? And the, the, the years and the, the viewpoint that I have is a reflection of the time in which I grew up. And... Uh, they're from a completely different generation with a completely different worldview. Um, it's it's got to be hard from the athlete's perspective when you're training seven days a week and you you're getting very very good. You're beating everyone that's getting getting put in front of you. And it, you're losing very very rarely, and it's always a tough competitive match when you do. Everyone around you is calling you a superstar, and you look phenomenal. You check social media, everyone's saying you're you're a god on the mat. And then you come into the gym and there's some old guy telling you you're not good enough. And you, every day it's like, well, what does this guy want from me? How, how hard do I have to work? Like, you're not good enough. Like, I want you to be the best in the world. I don't want you to be good. I want you to be great. And all of your friends are telling you all day, man, you're incredible. You submit me so easily to do this. And then this old guy is just like, nah, you got to get better. You got to work more. You're not working hard enough. At some point, you're going to be like, you know what? Fuck this old guy. Yeah. Like it's it's tough. You know, mentally, I, I get why. You know, they they left when I was 20 years old. I didn't get along with authority figures at all. And um, uh, to have someone telling you, you you've always got to work that little bit harder. You no, know, your skill set's not complete. You still need this, this, and this. When you're already doing very, very well. And far better than all but a tiny, tiny percentage of people. And then you've got this guy just constantly telling you, no, more has to be done. You're not there yet. Um, I can, you know, of course I understand. You just want, let me just enjoy this more. Like, uh, it's always a choice in life. Do you, you can be the best you possibly can, or you can go a route where you just get to enjoy life a little more. You do other things, you know, like there's more to the, to life than just the inside of a gym and learning how to do a better heel hook or a better double leg. Um, so of course, you know, years go by, you want to try other things and um, uh, you have to make this choice in life between extreme excellence versus being incredibly good, but maybe just enjoying my life a little more. Yeah, it's so interesting that incredibly good is a hard thing to deal with. I saw like when Kayla Harrison won her first gold medal and uh, the Olympics, you know, to go back to the gym and to trust again the maybe the old man you're you're being <laughs> too harsh on yourself, but to trust the old man. So uh, Jimmy Page or Jimmy Page or senior in that case 
to say, okay, we're gonna go back to this grind. Mm. And there's still uh, a path to improvement. There's still a lot to grow and still have the humility, even though you've just demonstrated greatness. So really good is just a stepping stone to to to, to true greatness. Um, that's really tough for athletes. Like yeah. uh, winning is actually very difficult. Yeah. Gold medals are very difficult. Plus there's the personal stuff of depression that comes with that which is you give so much of yourself to trying to win that. And once you do, there's a lot of personal stuff you have to deal with, which is like, what what, a, what do I want from life? To understand what is exactly, what am I chasing? Is it just winning or is it some bigger picture of excellence that's beyond just winning? So that that's all of, the, all of that mixed up together. And then when you have to be as a team really close together, there's the personal relationships, all of that gets exacerbated. Yeah. Do you think the team ever gets back together? I think there's always, you know, there's definitely a chance of that. Right now, I think they have a, uh, an excellent team themselves and uh, they're doing very well. Uh, they had an excellent performance at ADCC. So there's not a need for them to uh, to come to us. It's not like they, they lack anything. They still remember everything I taught them. They still coach and teach with the same methodology that I taught them. So um, uh, I don't think they have any need to do so. Uh, if they did, it would be because they wanted to. Um, I still think many of the same personality conflicts that originated the conflict would reemerge currently if if they started training together. Uh, by the way, to, to pile on the compliments, they have really nice merch too. The t-shirts are just excellent. Um, what have you learned from that process about how to have a team with personal conflicts? Do you have to deal with these giant egos as well? Yeah. Because ego um, is, a, is a, in part a superpower too, so you don't want to- Yeah, you, you, you don't want to suppress egos. Like I, I always laugh when people say, leave your ego at the door. It's like, what, what do you think drives competition? Like, yeah. if you want to be good at anything in life, you got to have an ego. Um, uh, no, I, I don't believe it's good or even a healthy thing to suppress egos. Um, I'm I'm a realist, and I understand that this is a sport where they make one gold medal per weight division. There's, as guys get better, they're going to be looking at their training partners and thinking, like, I'm going to have to fight this guy one day. And they're training next to each other. Of course, there's going to be tension. Um, there's always going to be uh, disagreements about, you know, what's the right way to act around uh, certain people, certain issues, and people are gonna come into conflict. Everyone's being programmed to be a, a, an alpha competitor, and you get a room full of people like that, there's gonna be conflict. Now, your question was, well, is there a way to resolve this? Yeah, there was, and for eight to nine years, I was very successful with this. But there's also a tipping point where things can flare out of control, and there will be periodic breakups. You know, they're not the first students I had that that left. I've been coaching a lot longer than I've been coaching the squad. And um, uh, I'm sure in the future there'll be other students who leave me. I, that's just the nature of the beast. It's sad when it happens, but life goes on. Uh, like Bukowski said, love is a fog that fades with the first uh, daylight of reality or something like that. So even love is temporary. Uh, 